You often hear people talk about lifelong learning, that it's important for people to continue to learn throughout their entire life. We also like to talk about day-long learning, that's important to learn through the entire day, that learning for children doesn't just happen while they're in school, they continue to learn. In fact, they probably learn a lot more outside of school. Now, we want to provide ways to support kids in their learning experiences outside of school in day-long learning, especially for young people who don't come from places where they're supporting their learning outside of school. Of course, some young people grow up in families that provide them with all types of opportunities for learning outside of school, but some people don't. And we want to provide opportunities to make sure that everyone from all backgrounds was able to have this opportunity to continue to learn through the day. Let me tell you the story about how we got started on one of our day-long learning projects. It's when we were developing the early versions of our first robotics technology. And we had developed some of our prototypes here at MIT, and we wanted to test it out with some kids. So we went to a local museum during the vacation week when kids were out of school, and we set up our prototypes of this robotics kit to see how kids would make use of it. And during that week, lots of kids came into the museum because it was school vacation, and they tried out the robotics kit, and they made interesting things, and some things worked, some things didn't work. It was a good learning experience for them, a good learning experience for us. At the end of the week, we thought it was over. We brought the robotics materials back to MIT. The next week, I get a call from the director of education at the museum, and she said, the kids are coming back after school, and they're saying, where's the Lego stuff? Where's the robotics stuff? She then talked to the kids. It turned out these were kids who were sneaking into the museum because they didn't have the money to come to the museum. They were kids who were getting in trouble outside of school because they didn't have anything else to do. And yet they wanted to come and continue to work on robotics activities. So we saw this was a great opportunity, that these kids who were just getting in trouble outside of school did have a yearning for learning, but for things that they really cared about. And we'd found one thing, they wanted to use our robotics kits to make things. So we felt we have to provide a place for them we could have given them free passes to the museum, but that wasn't good enough. The museum wasn't set up for kids to come and work on projects. So we decided to set up a separate space. We called it Computer Clubhouse. The kids could come after school to learn to express themselves creatively with new technologies, where they could build robotic devices, they could compose their own music in a, mu in a digital music studio, that they could make their own videos, they could make their own animations with new programming languages. So it's a place for kids to come to do creative activities that we saw as a rich learning opportunity, but the kids wanted to come to work on these types of activities. And we designed these, this first computer clubhouse especially for young people from low-income communities, kids who didn't have these opportunities in their homes, they didn't have computers at homes, in their homes. They didn't have a supportive family that helped them learn how to ex explore with these new technologies. So they really needed a place to be able to develop a literacy with new technologies. As we developed the first computer clubhouse, we decided that it should be based on four core principles. The first principle was it should be based on kids learning through designing, that they should always be involved in using technology to design things. The computer clubhouse should not be a place for coming and playing games. It should be a place to come and create your own games. It shouldn't be a place to come just to download music, but to create your own music. Not to just browse websites, but to create your own websites. So it's a place for creating, because we knew that the, the best learning activities would come when kids were creating things. The second guiding principle was that it should be a place where kids could follow their own interests. We didn't want it to be a place where you have everybody do the same thing at the same time. We knew that kids learn best, and it's true for adults as well, that when they're working on things that they're interested in, they're passionate about, 
when a new young person comes into the clubhouse, we always ask, what are you interested in? You know, and that gives us an idea of what types of things they might be interested in doing in the clubhouse. If they're interested in music, we'll show them how to use the music studio. If they're interested in sports, we might show them you know, how to create a website about their favorite sports team or to make an animation or a simulation of their favorite sport. So it's about you know, learning through designing, following your own interests. The third one is working as part of a community. That we didn't want the clubhouse just to be 20 kids, each sitting at 20 different computers. We knew they'd learn the most if they worked together with one another and with other people in the community. So we set it up, even in the architecture of the space, to make it easy for kids to move around. We made sure to get wheels with chairs, so they, you know, sorry, you know, with, with chairs with wheels, so the kids, as they were sitting there, could easily move around to work together on projects. We also invited in mentors from the community, volunteer mentors, people who had expertise. It could be an artist or an architect from the community or a scientist or a musician who would come in and the kids would learn together with them. They were part of the extended community. And we told the adults, don't come just to teach the kids, but work on your own projects. Kids are gonna be most inspired if they see adults continue to learn as well. So we want to have adults working in this space and building new things. I remember in the early days, we had some graduate students come and they were building their own robots there. And at first the kids didn't pay attention, they just went about their own things. But then the kids came over and said, you know, what's that doing or how did you do that? And gradually they became apprentices to this robotics project. So we saw it as a type of emergent community. We didn't assign kids to work on teams, but they sort of, out of their own interest, start connecting with other kids and with adults as part of a community of learners. The fourth guiding principle is we want to create an environment of respect and trust. Now, you might think, well, that's just because we want kids to you know, have good manners in the way they interact. And of course, that's partly important, but there's a bigger reason. We knew that if kids are really going to learn in this space, they have to take risks. They have to try new things. And when you take risks, you often fail. Things go wrong. You make mistakes. And when you make a mistake, if somebody is going to make fun of you and ridicule you, you're not going to take risks again. So that's why it's so important to have an environment of respect and trust where people are going to support one another. Uh, so you don't have to worry that if something goes wrong that you know, somebody's going to make fun of you. So with these guiding principles of learning through designing, following your interests, you know, participating in community, respect and trust, we developed this clubhouse and it became a community where young people were creatively you know, exploring and experimenting with new technologies. The first clubhouse was successful, so other places in Boston started creating their own clubhouses with our support. And then, with support from the Intel Foundation, we start to expand this around the world. So there's now more than 100 clubhouses in more than 20 countries around the world where young people are learning to explore and experiment and express themselves with new technologies. Now, as it expands, it keeps opening up new challenges and new opportunities. So the same way that we wanted collaboration inside one clubhouse in the beginning, now we want collaboration among the 100 clubhouses. So we've developed Online, an online clubhouse village where people at the different clubhouses share ideas back and forth and post their projects to learn from one another. So we see this as a place where people from all different backgrounds, all different interests, can be able to build on those interests to be able to uh, develop both the skills but also the confidence to be active participants in today's society. We see that a lot of the young people from low-income communities who come to the clubhouses, many of them feel marginalized in today's society. They feel on the fringe. They feel that they're never gonna fit in, that their families haven't really been fully integrated into the mainstream culture, that, you know, into the economic system. At the clubhouse, they start to see how they're able to be able to be active contributors. They've developed both the skills and the confidence and the creative know-how where they can be active participant in a society that will demand 
both technological skills and creative skills like never before, but the Computer Clubhouse helps prepare young people to be sort of active contributors and to lead a rich and fulfill fulfilling life. In the clubhouses, we often feel that it's important to have events, sort of culminating events where people can show off what they've created. Because people like to have an audience for what they've done, to get feedback from others, to see what they've done. These events can take different forms. Sometimes they could take the form of a competition, you know, like a robot competition where people make robots and see how their robot performs you know, against someone else's robot. In other cases, it might be an exhibition uh, where different people make something and like an opening of an art exhibit where people come and they'll get feedback from people who see the different things that they've created in their exhibition. I think what's most important is for people to be able to share their creations, get feedback from others, reflect on the feedback from what they've done, and then get new ideas. But I think that can come in many different forms. So in the clubhouse, I think different kids are gonna get their feedback and reflection in different ways. In some cases through competition, some cases through exhibition, but always by sharing with one another and getting ideas from one another. One thing that's really struck us in the clubhouses is that there are many young people who have been traditionally unsuccessful in school who are very successful in computer clubhouses. Kids who, their teachers say that the kids don't have any attention span, will come and work for three hours straight on a project that they really care about. So we sometimes have teachers who come and visit the clubhouse and they're shocked by the student who's falling asleep in class is actively engaged in doing things in the clubhouse. So we see if we provide young people with the opportunity to work on things they care about, they're often willing to work very hard. In my mind, there are many lessons from the clubhouse that could influence schools. I think schools could learn a lot from clubhouses. Now I think for different settings, for learning different things, we need different types of educational setups. But I think oftentimes schools are rigidly set up to support one type of learner and one type of learning experience. I think we have to broaden the type of learning experiences uh, because right now schools aren't succeeding for many young people. The clubhouse shows a different path that can help many young people you know, reach their, their capabilities and develop their confidence in ways that aren't working in schools. So I think there's a lot of lessons we can learn from clubhouses, both for other community centers, for homes, lessons for parents, but also lessons for how we can make schools be able to reach more broadly to the interests of all different kids from all different backgrounds.